Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Our hearts are very heavy at the loss of Kid Craddock, and words are very difficult for us to come up with at this time. But for just a little bit this morning, starting at 7 a.m. Central, Kelly Raspberry, Big Al, JC, and Jenna will be here to express their thoughts and feelings. And most importantly, we're going to open up the phone lines and hear from you as well. 1-800-KID-LIVE. 1-800-KIDD-LIVE. We hope you join us starting at 7 a.m. Central this morning to express the love we felt for Kid Craddock. Until then, let's enjoy some of our favorite moments from the show. Sometimes a, a picture can um, can spawn a thought, you know, and a philosophy can arrive from that thought. Okay. You, you guys have any idea what I'm talking about? None. Whatsoever. No. Okay. No. Where are we going with this? So, so I see this picture of Richard Branson, and he's uh, parasailing with a naked model on his back. And okay. I, and oh, that's cool. Down there. Yeah. And, and thought, it made you think, what can I do with a naked model on my back? No, it made me think, wow. That guy looks happy. <laughs> He's probably really happy about okay. that. Don't you think? Yeah. Um, I, I don't see him frowning. Or it's right. like if you've already experienced everything in the world and you still have to find something that excites you. I mean, what random things would you have to try? A naked model on your back while you're parasailing? He's that a, is so incredibly random. He's a multi-billionaire. And he has learned the secret, which is happiness requires effort and yeah. work. And if you're not happy right now... Maybe it's simply because you're not trying to be happy. Not working at it. This is really kind of groundbreaking here. Or sad. I mean, back in the day, <laughs> Will Rogers, the greatest Oklahoman ever, I think, said, um, people are just, I think people are just about as happy as they want to be. And he was kind of, you know, corny and homespun, but that really makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. People are just, they call it the set point. What is the set point in your brain for happiness? Some people's, if you imagine that way over to the right uh -huh. on the set point is, is euphorically happy all the time. Okay. And way to the left is, it doesn't, you could win the lottery tomorrow and all you do is complain about mm -hmm. the taxes. Yeah. yeah. So where is your set point? Is it at the 50-50 mark, or are you leaning to the right side, towards the happiness side, or the left side? Oh. And we're kind of it's kind of beyond our control. Our upbringing decides where that set point is, and it is our job to move it ourselves. So the difference between being happy and being unhappy, I'm starting to believe, is effort. Imagine a happy person in your mind. Maybe you're picturing a kid like diving into a swimming pool or Phil Mickelson yesterday getting a group hug from his entire family yep. after winning the British Open. Or Richard Branson parasailing with a naked mm -hmm. supermodel on his back. That's happy. Now imagine a depressed person sitting on the sofa in the dark, probably drinking alone, <sighs> watching infomercials at 3 in the morning. Yeah. See, that sounds like bliss to me. Maybe he just never <laughs> got out of bed. The primary difference is... The happy person is doing something. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous to imagine the roles reverse. They don't write sad ballads about people parasailing with naked uh, models on their back. No. There's no way. They write sad ballads about people that can't get out of bed, right? Because they're so sad. Right. And it was Sigmund Freud. You know Sigmund Freud. Personally and intimately. He said that unhappiness <laughs> was the default position of our brains. Unhappy? Yeah, unhappy. I don't happen to believe that, but no. I do believe we have a set point that will determine that. But he believes that he believed that happiness takes effort. And as one study put it, having the right genes and being surrounded by the right people are part of the equation. But the rest of it is doing things that make you feel good. I don't think now a lot of people are going, well, duh, of course, but it's not so easy when you're sad. You don't want to do anything. Here's the thing. People go to work every day at jobs they hate, right? Yeah. So the, and then once they get time off, what do they do? They do nothing, right? Because right. all I want to do is nothing. I want to relax. I've been doing this crappy job. I'm going to do nothing now. So that means the only time they do anything is when it's something they don't like. Hmm. So okay. if you don't throw in an equal amount of doing things you like to offset the things you don't like, so you have to go against those instincts to just lay there like, Anything's better than not being at that job. So I'm just going to lay here and this is awesome. No, it isn't. What's awesome is going out and making memories and positive thoughts that you can look to when you're miserable at work and say, when I do have time off, I'm going to have some fun. Because happiness is not the absence of doing unpleasant things. That's not what happiness, happiness is. It's not the absence of doing. Okay. All right. right. So get, just being off work is not enough. Well, 
I mean, if just laying around is like not good enough, what if you're laying around by by the pool mm-hmm. at the beach? Right. I mean, does that count as doing something fun? Sure, if it's something if it makes you happy. But if you're at the beach, go go jet skiing. Or, why do you have to? Why can't you just la- if that really makes you happy? Get your to heart lay there? going. Get Here, your heart pumping. Why you have to? Because they did a survey among seniors, and seniors, of course, what's the number one thing a senior citizen has to deal with that can make them unhappy? The number one thing is health. Lonely, yeah. Health. health. If you don't have your health, it's really hard to be happy. Right. But when asked about their happiness, they said the thing that that makes them happy is or sad is not health related. It's related to how many hobbies they have and how many friends they have. Okay. That's all that matters to them. Friends and hobbies. And it's never harder to go out and make friends or start a new hobby than when you're in the throes of depression. But that exactly is the cure to your problem. It's just, not. Just I go see, do something. So that kind of puts a bad message out there, though, because it's like, I mean, I've, I'll admit it. Like, I've been in a place in, the re- in a recent year that it's like, I don't, people say, you, it's just all a decision. Happiness is a yeah. decision. Yeah. Like, you go do things. I have a great group of friends. I have a good job. I, you know, I have my health. And I didn't want to get out of bed half the time. I was so upset. And it's like, sometimes it is science. you got to take medicine sometimes, sometimes. to be well, happy. I'm not saying you don't. Well, Ke- Kelly's asked me in the past. She, she'll look me in the face and say, JC, I don't understand how you're always happy. Yeah. And I, and yeah. that's probably the opposite of what Jenna says. I really do think that you choose to be happy. Yeah. Because you choose to do whatever you do throughout the day. It's like one of those things where, oh, yeah, man, I could just stay home tonight and just be miserable, or I could choose to get ready, put a smile on my face, mm. and go out and see what the world has that. That takes effort, doesn't it? It if does. It really does. I'm walking my house and I'm in a bad mood, if I make myself smile, it automatically makes you feel better. Even it if does. you just put a fake smile, it just makes just something tricks your brain somehow. Yeah. When, when my daughter was uh, really little, she would be, before she started school, she'd be so excited to see me when I came home from work. You know, and I remember I went to the dollar store one time, Kelly, and spent just the about, one time spent about one hundred and fifty dollars. So I had one hundred and fifty things for her in my trunk so that every day I could give mm-hmm. her some little stupid trinket from the dollar. Try right. this if you're a dad. It's really cool because your kid will come running out to greet you and all your friends will think it's because she loves you so much. But she really just wants that treat. And, out and it could be trunk. something that's twenty five cents. Yeah. So I kept this stuff in my trunk. And I knew when I got home from work that she would be running out to the garage, heard my car come in. So excited to see me. Daddy, daddy, daddy. And I would be dead tired because I got up at 3 in the morning. I slept, you know, an hour the night before. Mm. And all I want to do is take a nap. So I would have to give myself a pep talk in the car. I would turn off the car and I'd be like, okay, this is your daughter. This is your blessing in life. This is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. Yeah. And she loves you so much. And you have to get out of this car and, and be as excited as she is. And I really had to talk myself into it. Mm-hmm. You guys get that? Yeah. yeah, I get that. You ever have to do that? But I sometimes I mean, I mean, we're on the radio every day. Like, and we have to act happy. I had a I had a pretty cool. I had my my bio dad and the family came into town last week, and yeah. we're still getting to know each other. And so I was talking to my aunt, and she was she was asking me about when I was in college, and the subject of me living in my truck for a little while, but got brought up. Yeah, because they didn't live through that. And uh, she asked me. She said, "Well, when when you were living in your truck, were you happy?" Yeah. And I looked at her, and I was like, honestly. Yeah, you're always happy no matter what. I was, I was happy. I was. You're, I wasn't happy with the situation boy, in my that life. That ticks me off. In I, fact, that single thing might make me unhappy. I was. I wasn't happy that I was living in my car, but I was. But I got to wake up and I had the the beach right there in the sunset, God. Yeah. and I didn't like going and taking a shower in the re- in the public restroom. But at least I got to take a shower and yeah. I got to go to school and I had yeah. friends that helped me. Whatever. So I told her I was like, I was happy. You know, as homeless and, I, and happy, and I didn't and I didn't know what I was missing. Exactly, so when you don't know what you're missing, but that's why I think it's an expectation level set. Sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. Like if your expectations are really high to right. make you happy, then you are going to be unhappy. And well, well you got to happy. I'm not. I'm not to the point where I'm going to have I'm happy like Branson here with a stripper on my back. Yeah, like a stripper. Yeah. I'm not that happy. Yeah, yeah. she was a stripper. Al, she's a model. <laughs> um, okay, model. Yeah. oh please. You're right. You're but right. he would be right. happy whether he was rich or poor. Like, look at the things he does and the way he lives his life. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, how many rich people do you meet that are miserable? You know, you take the guy from uh, PayPal. His name is Elon Musk. He started PayPal. Mm-hmm. All right. And sold it for billions of dollars. Yeah. Now what? Well, he sat around for a minute and went, I'm going to continue this zest I have for life. I'm going to create a space station. I've got billions of dollars. I'm going to build a rocket so that uh, maybe we can recolonize 100 years from now in space. Oh, wait a minute. I just met the guy that um, designs cars for Maserati. I'm going to design an all electric car and call it the Tesla. Hmm. And it's going to be the most rewarded and awarded car, the most awarded car in terms of um, the car magazines and stuff of all time. Mm-hmm. The Tesla. That's the guy that that started PayPal. Yeah. 
He's got plans. He's got all this stuff he's doing. He's doing stuff. I'm reading that Ing book. I just haven't got to the chapter yet where I'm supposed to start doing stuff. Doing. Yeah. About how you can be happy by Ing. You know, yeah. Like moving, doing, doing something. Dancing. It's all about being yeah. physical. Ing. Yeah. It's all about being physical. Crying. Medicating. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Sobbing. I even bought a little journal I'm going to do with it. I'm really going to try. I, I saw a really cool quote, and I, I wrote it down, but I, it's been too long, and I can't remember how it goes. So I'll just skip it. But it's something, <laughs> but it's something like this. Like the, what stands between you and happiness, whatever that problem is that stands between you and being happy, yeah. it's usually a simple matter of rethinking why that makes you unhappy. Mm-hmm. For example, um, you've, you know, you're, you're going on a dream vacation and your flight is canceled while you're at the airport. Okay. Your whole family's there and you can't wait. You're going to Hawaii and your flight's canceled. That's terrible, right? Yeah. But how terrible is it really? In the grand scheme of things, it's really not that terrible. Right. And what you could do is leave the airport that day and go do something totally fun, have a blast, come back and go to Hawaii tomorrow. So if you can just if you can just reframe how you feel about that thing that's bothering you, mm-hmm. then it that's the difference between being happy and being unhappy. I'm not saying I'm good at it. I'm just telling you I know how no, to do it. No, it is difficult to do I don't do think it, our but, default yeah. position is unhappy, though. No, your, I default, don't either. your default is not unhappy. Yours is an L. It changes. I mean, it's not like, yeah. like I said, I'm not like I'm just frolicking every You're a happy you person. You should wake up You happy. should feel blessed that your set point for happiness yeah. is higher than most people. Yeah, I It do. is. And they say, and I'm not relating this to you at all. Oh, of course not. Here comes the insult. <laughs> okay, then I'll hold the insult. <laughs> yeah. I'll go ahead with the insult. Be happy. Al's happy. <laughs> yeah. They say that the more intellectual you are, and the, well, they do. They say the more intellectual you are, the less chance you have of finding happiness because you overthink freaking everything. Mm-hmm. You overthink it. Nothing but, is good. Are enough. you willing to you say don't, you don't really think through things? You do a lot of impulse things. Yeah, I do. You know, it doesn't like mean you're dumb. Stuff. It just doesn't mean, mean you're dumb. It's you're impulsive. Yeah. I, I don't agree with that because you look at Richard Branson, who is kind of a genius. Yeah, and he is. But you don't know prob- how impulsive he is. We don't know him no, personally. To me, that impulsive. that makes you smarter than smart people. If you figured out how to be happy. How, how can anybody say you're not smart? Of course you're smart. You figured out how to be happy. Isn't that the whole goal? You know why? Because right. he made rich doing what made him happy. Yeah. He you know, got he's, rich. he's an yeah. adventure. Yeah. He yeah. got, yeah, yeah, he got, he made all his money. Yeah. And was, that's, and that's what's rare. It's like if you can make money by being an yeah. adventurer. It was a side benefit, actually. Right. It wasn't even the thing he was going for. And they say, if you really want to try to make a bunch of money, try not to. That's the best way to make a bunch of money is try not to. Mm-hmm. Just do the thing you love the most hmm. and, and practice it for 10,000 hours. And get really great at it. Tell that to all the actors waiting tables. You know? Yeah, right. Mm. Well, there you go. You're right. What was I thinking? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind on the happiness wah, segment. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. More Kid Craddock in the Morning on the way. Okay. Kid Craddock in the Morning.